Hello, everybody. We're here speaking with Kim Ho, lead software engineer at salesforce.com. And today he's going to show us about a project called Gigantor that uh, integrates Rundeck and the Salt API. It's pretty, pretty interesting. And um, just a little background, uh, you were saying how you had this server provisioning process that you needed to hand over to the uh, SRE group there. And, uh, and this is really what kind of motivated uh, what we're seeing today. Right. So as I was saying earlier, um, what we really want to do is provision new hardware or essentially um, remove the variability in the snowflakes that, that are generated when operators manually build hardware. Um, so as part of um, building our new infrastructure automation stack, um, we needed the tools that allow operators to run through very, very complicated run lists, um, you know, 12, 13 steps that all have sub-steps um, that are involved in the, in the process of creating a new server. Um, so if you can imagine creating a new server, what this entails is, you know, you stop the old one, you take it out of load balancers, you disable the monitoring, then you rebuild it by installing base image and all the, you know, libraries and applications that, that come along with that. Um, then you need to restart it, um, make sure that it's healthy, put it back into the load balancer, re-enable monitoring, um, and then do any, you know, cleanup work that, you know, that that's involved and then it set it as active in whatever, you know, um, application DBs that you might have that, you know, let the world know that, hey, I'm ready for traffic. Um, so that's kind of what's involved in it. Um, so what we needed was we needed a way to, you know, execute commands on a remote host. We needed a way to tie these commands together so that operators, you know, it removes the manual process um, so that they can just click a button um, you know, magic happens and, you know, at the end of this process, um, however long that it takes, um, what you're given is a, you know, brand new um, server that's, you know, built the way that we've specified it and there's no deviation from the standard. Um, so for us, what this means in terms of remote execution is it means salt. Um, it's a highly performant, scalable solution that allows arbitrary functions to be executed on a remote host. Um, it's a very active open source project. Um, so it, it actually consists of three parts. There's the salt master, um, which is responsible for dispatching um, commands to the second component, which is the salt minion, which is an agent that runs on remote hosts that actually perform the invocation. In front of all of this is the Salt API, which is a REST interface for the master. And it allows um, various tools to essentially plug in and um, dispatch commands to Salt. Um, so this gives us our reliable, scalable um, remote execution component. Um, so what we need now is we needed a way to you know, specify and um, essentially outline the series of steps that are involved in any given process that we want to automate. And for us, that tool is Rundeck. Um, it gives us a way to, you know, define um, various sequences. Um, so the sequences that I mentioned earlier, you know, stop applications, um, remove things from monitoring, reinstall, restart, you know, set active. Um, we can encapsulate those in Rundeck steps. Um, so these tools together um, provide us the, the framework or, or the components that we needed to, to actually you know, satisfy our use case. But what we were missing was we were missing the piece that tied these two great tools together. Um, so that's kind of where um, the motivation for Salt API, the plugin for Salt API um, came into being. Um, so um, that kind of explains our motivation for it. Um, so without further ado, um, let's get into a demo of Salt itself. Um, so what I have here is a test file. So what Salt will allow us to do is run arbitrary commands. One of those modules that Salt provides is actually the command module, which we actually leverage quite a bit. Um, so what we can do is we can run, whoops, no test.
and salt will actually delegate to all minions um, run this command cat temp test file so it'll run it'll run the command and it'll return a, a blob um, it'll have the PID, the return code and the output of the command so, so you can see that we can actually do, you know, arbitrary command execution across our infrastructure. So yeah, this is this is like the fundamental building block that you showed in your diagram of, of how you tell uh, a remote host to do something. Exactly. So, so we have this lower um, this lower yellow block now, right? So what we're missing is the the higher level, you know, execute these steps in this particular sequence. So that's kind of where Rundeck comes comes into play. So if we look at Rundeck, the things that allows us to do is it allows us to define workflows. So we can do things like add options, which is great for parameterizing our um, our workflows. And more importantly, it actually allows us to you know create a series of commands, right? So we can do things like echo some data into some file. And then, you know, later we can add another. That's just step. a good example of a of a simple command step. Right. So we can do all sorts of more complicated um, flows and sequences. Um, so you can you can kind of build your your repeatable steps this way. Um, and with this, you essentially create you create your essentially your SR run list or um, your SOPs. Um, so that you remove the variability from what SRs are doing. So right. with these this two the pieces, alternative to the do this then that run list. Right. So with these two, we essentially have now the purple section as well. So for for Salesforce, what we were missing on top of that was we were, we were missing really the command and control bits. Um, we'd like for you know we'd like to provide our own custom data into Rundeck so that operators. Are, are even further removed from from the amount of information that, that they need to provide and be responsible for. Um, we also would like to kind of mask away some of some of the what's underneath the covers, um, so that you know they're agnostic. They get a, a very consistent view of what's happening underneath. Um, so for us, that was actually the king control. Um, so as you can see, I have this job in Rundeck. Um, Kingpin actually uses the Rundeck APIs to figure out what's in Rundeck and how to execute it. So what this means is that you know you're provided with you know, the workflow listing. Um, in Kingpin knows exactly how to um, delegate to Rundeck, and it also it also acts as the authority for what's available to be dispatched to in Rundeck. So we have the resources XML integration um, that that Rundeck ultimately can dispatch to. So one thing so I Kingpin haven't talked about provides the view of nodes to Rundeck. Right. So one thing that we haven't talked about yet is the Salt API plugin itself. So let's work our way. Um, up again from from salt. So in salt, there's actually a tiny bit of configuration needed um, on the minion um, to support salt API. So specifically, what we need is that the ID of the minion match the the node name and host name. In, in the resources XML. Typically, you, we set this to FKDN. Um, you can set it to short name if you know your domain has to be the same. But, but um, it's important that this provide a consistent view to all pieces in the stack. Um, so that's the only thing that's actually required um, from Zolt. Um, in Rundeck, aside from installing the plugin, you actually, when you define your jobs, you need to you need to provide a couple extra options that essentially tell Rundeck how to authenticate with Salt API. So, in particular, you need and that's the, that plugin is what is the client to that API. That's right. So it's responsible for um, 
performing the actions directly against Salt API instead of using Rendex SSH ex executor. Um, so what the options that are required are the Salt API external auth authentication. Um, so in Salt, this means either PAM or LDAP. Um, you specify the endpoint and the user and the password. So this, these four bits give the plugin enough information to authenticate against Salt API and execute the command. And your commands are defined in, in sequence in your workflow. So if we look at this simple workflow, um, you can see all it's doing is going to be running run all and catting that test file. So if we back out of this and we actually execute it, um, what this looks like from a user point of view in um, in Rundeck is right now it's going behind the covers to execute the job and what you can see is um, the plugins actually authenticating against the salt endpoints um, submitting the job um, waiting for it to finish and then it'll actually get the test file or the output of the of the test file so what's important to note here is that the ret code returned by the command run all module will actually impact whether the workflow step succeeds or not so if it gets a non-zero return code um, it'll actually fail this particular step of the workflow. And then depending on whether your workflow is con um, configured to keep going or not, um, it'll react appropriately. Um, so that level of integration, I mean, we have. Um, so it's important that your modules actually return the correct um, return codes uh, so that the tools higher up in the stack know exactly what's happening. Um, some modules in Salt don't, and, and you need to be aware of how to configure the plugin so that um, the correct action is taken when when you don't have return codes. Yeah, and that's just a great practice anyway, uh, because you never know what's going to be calling your tool. So it's kind of being a good citizen, whether it be Salt or something else, that you design it to return exit code to reflect the status of that. Exactly. So. Obviously, our operators don't, you know, go through and provide credentials for every um, action they take. Um, when they execute these things through Kingpin, you'll see that we have release host, which was the first drop down um, here, but all the other arguments are missing, and that's because Kingpin is kind of hiding some of that, um, and then it, and Kingpin itself is responsible for filling that out. Um, so all they get is. Um, a dropdown that has a single argument salt, um, which is our released VM. Um, so what we have here is Kingpin is actually um, looking at the workflow that Rundeck exposes. It's parsing the option data um, and it's filtering out things that it knows it's authoritative for and then providing the hooks into other internal services to, prov to, to kind of fill out dropdowns and things like that. So if we start the workflow, this will actually use Rundex API to um, execute the workflow. So we should see the same um, output that we saw earlier in Rundex, and that's exactly what we see. We see it authenticating, submitting the job, um, getting the status, and we see the output from the job, and, and we notice that the execution is successful. So that's kind of you know where we see ourselves going when we write the things like the you know, reprovisioning or provisioning workflow. Um, we envision a, a world where operators come into Kingpin, they provide very little information, um, most of it sourced through other um, internal services where you know, the information will be vetted and should correct. And all they do is hit start, you know, and then at the end of that process, we have a brand spanking new server. Um, it's configured exactly the way we want it, um, and there's really no other work necessary. Um, so that's kind of our end goal um, and where we want to get to. Um, so for Salt API specifically, um, our future plans for this particular product is, you know, we'd like to do things like have more robust um, asynchronous dispatch. So, so one of the challenges we have is um, 
when, when Salt API dispatches a command to Salt, um, that dispatch is truly asynchronous. It's running on the menu. And, and some of our, and some of our um, jobs take quite a while, um, especially when you know, you're doing things like you know reinstalling a base image. Um, so if if we get into a situation where this the some job is still running on a minion somewhere and, and we lose Rundex for whatever reason, um, we'd like to you know hold that state and, and be able to pick up the workflow um, when we get Rundex back up. Um, so it's things like that where we actually need to roll up our sleeves and do work in both Rundex and Salt API um, to kind of build that support. Um, other things that we'd like to do is we'd like to have cancel. Um, so right now, for the same reasons, you know, you dispatch something asynchronously to salt, um, and, and can, the cancellation in run deck doesn't translate to a cancellation in salt. So it's things like that that build or flesh out the plugin capability um, where we or the community can, can, can kind of contribute and build up support. Um, that's kind of where we want to go. Yeah, and what's cool is that uh, we, we can do this in the open source community. You, you have that Salt um, API uh, as a plugin already contributed to the to the Rundeck um, plugins project. Yeah, we're really interested in seeing what other people do with it. Yeah, it's really cool. All right, well, uh, thanks for that demo. and. Um, I think it's pretty interesting. I really love how the software design layers like that. You had the uh, you showed us how it worked kind of just at that salt level on a on a single host, and then um, how that rolled up into how the salt API invokes it through the salt master. How you parameterize the jobs with the credential inputs that Gigantor is going to need to pass um, to the to the run deck um, salt uh, plugin layer so that it can go ahead and dispatch the, the module or, or the command.run type of uh, call through uh, through the Salt API. So um, I just love loosely coupled tool chain design, and I think this is a good example of it. We do, too. All right. Well, thanks a lot, Kim, and look forward to seeing more about this, and, and uh, we'll talk again soon. Yep. Thanks, thanks Alex.